In our previous video, we learned about how to set up a shipping model and how customers can be served better by simply choosing a delivery model that suits the business. In this video, we learn about payments and settlements and the rules and policies associated with them. We'll also learn about the taxes involved and how you can do them without any issues. Any product or service bought through the ONDC network will always have certain commercial elements which we've simplified under five broad subgroups for you. One, buyer price. Two, buyer application fee. Three, seller application fee. Four, gateway fee. Five, ONDC network charges. If delivery is paid by the buyer, that will have the same five components as well. Do note, in the initial months, gateway fees and ONDC network charges will not be applicable. The first component of our pricing structure is the buyer price. This is the final amount that a customer pays on the ONDC network. There are four additional components that, along with the net amount realized by the seller, collectively make up the buyer price. These include the net amount realized by the seller, seller application fee, buyer application fee, gateway fee, and ONDC charges. Together, these five elements constitute the total buyer price on the ONDC network. The declared price, which includes GST, is the final price declared and listed by the seller on the seller application. Keep in mind that this price should never exceed the maximum retail price, MRP. Then you have the delivery fee, which is the fee charged for delivery services. The packaging and convenience fees make up the other charges. And finally, to complete the buyer price, we'll also include the discounts provided either by the seller network participant or the buyer network participant. This provides a precise breakdown of the total amount due from the customer. The second component is the buyer application fee. The buyer network participant may charge a finder's fee to the seller network participant for sourcing new customers. This fee can be a percentage of the total order value or fixed amount per successful order. If the seller network participant disagrees with the fee, the buyer network participant has the option to not proceed with the transaction. Making up the next component is the seller application fee. The seller network participant may impose a fee on each successful order for catalog item listing, with the fee terms being mutually agreed upon by the seller network participant and the seller. The fee can have various models like per transaction percentage basis, fixed fee or transaction, or slab based. The ONDC network will not play a role in this determination. Sellers have the option to incorporate these charges into their listed prices if they choose. To give you an example of this, a buyer network participant or a seller network participant can procure logistics services on the network, but the payment terms will be agreed upon and settled with the logistics seller network participant according to agreed upon terms between the two parties involved. The fourth component is logistics. This simply means the delivery process, how an order is shipped to the customer. This involves extra costs and the buyer network participant or seller network participant may hire a delivery partner whose services they may or may not charge to the buyer. The final component of payments and settlements is the ONDC network fee and payment gateway fee. Payment gateways and the ONDC network may charge a fee from the buyer network participant and seller network participant or both according to their agreements. In the initial months, payment gateway and ONDC network services are available for free. These fees will not be added to the buyer's price and will be paid separately by the buyer network participant or seller network participant. Now that we've covered the commercial components of payments and settlements, let's go through the buyer network participant collection and settlement terms. Both the buyer network participant and seller network participant will have to agree and set these terms accordingly. 
First, they'll have to settle on the buyer application fee. Whether this fee is a fixed amount or a percentage of the total order amount to be paid by the seller network participants. Next, they decide and agree on the event trigger. Which specific event will trigger payment settlement with the receiver, such as order delivery, return, or completion of the return period? Then there is the settlement window, which is the time between the event trigger and payment settlement. Usually, a set number of working days from the date of collection, shipment, delivery, or the end of the return window. Next is the withholding amount, which is a percentage of payment that is held back by the payment collector until a certain event is triggered. For example, the buyer may choose to disburse 50% of the payment post-delivery and the remaining 50% after the end of the return window. Last but not least, both seller network participant and buyer network participant will have to agree on a return window, which is the number of days after delivery, shipment or collection within which the buyer can return their product if returnable. Now let's move on to other payment related queries. There's just one more remaining and it's cancellation and refunds. How you initiate refunds for returns, cancellations and damaged items will depend on these three scenarios. If it was a prepaid order, if it was a cash on delivery, COD order, cancelled before delivery, if it was a COD order cancelled after delivery. Let's look at each one of them, one by one, so you know exactly how to deal with them. For prepaid orders, if the buyer cancels the order before delivery, the buyer network participant or seller network participant that collected the buyer price will refund the amount in full, minus any cancellation charges as agreed with the buyer. ONDC will have no involvement in this matter and the settlement terms, including fees and refunds, will be decided between the network participants involved. In case of a cash on delivery order, which has been cancelled before the delivery, there will be no refund on the buyer's price since the buyer has not yet paid it. However, since the order has already been shipped, the delivery partner has already incurred some costs. They will also have to return the cancelled order back to the place it was originally shipped from, which is also called the return before delivery. In this case, the cost of shipping and returning will have to be settled between the delivery partner and the network participant who has hired them. For COD orders that are cancelled after they're delivered, the buyer or seller network participant who's hired and collected the buyer price through the delivery partner will start the refund process for the buyer. Again, the ONDC network will have no involvement and the settlement terms, including but not related to the buyer app fee, seller app fee, and logistics cost for such refunds will be decided solely between the network participants involved. Once the transactions, including any refunds required, have been settled, the order journey is closed. That covers almost everything there is to know about the ONDC network. You are now nearly an expert, but there's just one last thing left, and an important one, taxes. And that's going to be our last topic, understanding the different taxes involved when running a business. For any business operating in India, it is important to comply with tax laws and fulfill their tax obligations on time. Network participants using the ONDC network also need to assess their tax liabilities and comply with two types of tax laws. Tax deduction at source, TDS, under the Income Tax Act 1961, and the GST laws. Under the GST laws, network participants must comply with the CGST Act 2017 and its rules. However, State GST laws may also apply and vary depending on the state in which the business is operating. It is important for network participants to be aware of these taxes so they can fulfill them accordingly. Sounds confusing? Don't worry. We've simplified this for you into just two types so that it's easier to understand. The first is the tax obligations on the actual supply. When a buyer purchases something from a seller on the ONDC network, 
the buyer network participant and seller network participant must make sure that the seller pays the required taxes on the transactions correctly and on time. The second is tax obligations on commissions and fees. When a buyer purchases something on the ONDC network, there are multiple parties involved in facilitating the transaction, such as the buyer network participant, the seller network participant, and the logistics seller network participants. Each earns money by charging fees for their services. The tax obligations on commissions and fees refer to the taxes that these parties must pay on the fees they earn for facilitating the transaction. In simpler terms, they need to pay taxes on the money they earn from helping with the sale. Now that we've simplified tax obligations into two types, let's look at the two main factors that influence them, the seller side business model and the transaction level characteristics. There are three types of seller side models in e-commerce. First is the inventory model. In the ONDC network context, this includes all the inventory seller network participants. Here, the seller network participant owns the inventory in addition to the platform where they list their goods and services. In this model, from a tax perspective, the supply of goods and services is considered to be by the seller network participant. The second model is the marketplace model, where sellers can list their goods or services on the platform of the seller network participant, which connects buyers and sellers. In this model, the seller NP charges fees for its services and the actual supply of goods or services is considered to be from the seller to the buyer. The third model is the aggregator model. This is similar to the marketplace model where sellers can provide goods or services to buyers using the platform of the seller network participant. However, for certain specified services, the seller network participant is liable to pay GST under certain conditions. These service providers are known as aggregators. And in the context of the ONDC network, they are marketplace seller network participants operating in the F&B or mobility sectors. When it comes to taxes in e-commerce, certain transaction level details can affect the tax liabilities. And it is important to know what type of questions to ask to understand this better, such as who collected payment, whether the transaction was within one state or between different states, who handled the delivery partners, and who offered discounts, if any. Knowing the answers to these questions will help you assess the taxes you have to pay with respect to any given transaction. We understand that doing your taxes can seem like a chore sometimes, but keeping to the steps and methods we've gone through today will help you simplify the process. Besides these steps, since the buyer network participant and seller network participant are considered to be e-commerce entities, do keep in mind that there are certain rules that they must comply with. These are Section 194-0 of the Income Tax Act and Section 52 of the CGST Act. If you've covered all of these bases, you're good to go. To learn more about tax compliance, please check the ONDC website. However, tax laws are regularly revised and ONDC's guidance may not cover everything. So it is always safer to consult experts such as a chartered accountant or tax consultant so you can avoid any issues with tax authorities. In this session, we went through quite a lot. We started by learning about the various components that make up payments and settlements on the ONDC network settlement terms, and how to process cancellations and refunds. Then we moved into our topic on taxes, what they are and who is responsible for paying them. This completes our journey. All that's left is for you to get your dream business running the way you've always wanted it to. If you still have the appetite to keep learning even more about the ONBC network, its vision, its goals and management, please scan this QR code and we'll be happy to continue our conversations there. See you around and good luck with your awesome business plan.